If there is a complicated bread to bake, it's the baguette. It takes a good recipe, a good kneading, a correct shaping, and a very precise fermentation to achieve a crispy crust and a beautiful open crumb. But no matter how well we do all these steps, it all ends up in the oven. So today, I am here to give you a hand with just that. I am not going to bake just one baguette. I am going to bake them in eight different ways. I am going to bake them in a home oven, adding steam. Then I am going to use a Dutch oven and a crock pot. I am also going to bake them in an oven bag. I will bake some in a pastry convection oven. Obviously, I am going to use my deck oven too. Others I will bake in a small countertop oven. And finally, in the most unthinkable one. So let's get started and may the gluten be with you. So the first thing that we have to do is to prepare the mixer. Today I'll be using the paddle, which I always prefer instead of a hook, because it's much better when working with high hydration doughs. For today's recipe we're going to use bread flour, a little semolina, salt, water, some optional dry yeast, and obviously a very active sourdough starter. In the mixing bowl we add the flour. We continue with the semolina. Now with the active sourdough starter, now comes a pinch of yeast, salt, and let's turn it on. We immediately add the water very little by little. And that method is known as bassinage. Let's also take this as an opportunity to review the recipe and make sure that we have not made a mistake. Time to turn up the speed. And this is the secret of why I use the paddle. The dough ends up hooking to it and we have a perfect gluten development. Now we put it into a bowl and let it rest for two hours. Now with wet hands, we're going to take the dough and fold it a few times. This way we're going to interwind the gluten network and we're going to give it much more tension. Now we cover it and we take it immediately to the... the... What? well... Uh, the... fridge, yes. And the next day we're going to find this dough. Look at how it is. It's full of air. With a bit of semolina or flour on the counter, let's carefully unmold the dough. The idea is not to degas it, so do it very carefully. We arrange it a little and prepare to cut into portions. Each one will weigh around 200 grams. Now, let's pre-shape the baguette, a very important step when making this type of bread. What we're going to do is give it some tension with our hands, and that's it. Meanwhile, we are going to prepare the linen cloth where the baguettes will rest, which is also known as the couche in French. We put a little flour or semolina, now it's time to shape the baguettes. We're going to do it by rolling them onto themselves and thus we are going to give them tension and strength. With both hands from the center and out, we will give them the final shape. It is key not to squeeze too much. Let's do one more. Perfect! Now that we have them all, we are going to transfer them one by one to the couche, so that they rest for a while before going to the oven. Now it's time to start with the tests, and we are going to do it in this home oven, where we are going to bake the baguettes with this baking steel, which emulates a deck oven. We are also going to place a tray at the bottom of the oven, which is where we are going to pour the water so that we can create some artisan steam. Now we are going to turn off the convector mode and preheat the oven to 480 degrees Fahrenheit. Ok, we are ready to bake. On the peel I place a little more semolina. And with the help of this little peel, we will transfer the baguettes one by one onto the bigger peel very carefully, so as not to degas them, that's really important. Another very important tool is a lamb or cutter. With great care and without hesitation, we will score lengthwise each baguette. Let's go to the oven and place them directly on the baking steel. Now comes the most crucial part of this test, adding the water to generate steam. That's why we put the oven in non-convection mode, and our loaves would get dry ahead of time. Baking time will be 20 minutes. And by the magic of the gluten, here we have them back. Look how well they look and what an amazing ear they have. Listen to this. Now it's time to move on to the second test. I'm going to preheat my Dutch oven at 480 degrees Fahrenheit. And here we have it ready. 
Let's open it and put one of the baguettes in there. Now we score it lengthwise, cover and take it to the oven for 10 minutes. And there we go. We open and... Nice! <laughs> it worked. And it goes back to the oven for 10 more minutes so that it gets some color. Look at how light it is. And I want to hear this creak. Let's leave it there and continue with the next test, which is the crock pot. If this pot really heats as much as an iron one. We take it to the oven and preheat it at 480 degrees Fahrenheit and here we have it back. And we're going to place another baguette on a parchment paper. We score it and put it in there. Another really important part of this test will be that the lid keeps the gases in there and does not let them escape. Alright, let's take it to the oven. It's the same as before, 10 minutes. And now the moment we were all waiting for, right? It didn't open so much. It looks like some gas escaped from the pot. It doesn't matter, let's take it back to the oven for another 10 minutes to finish it off. And here it's back, let's not look at it too much. But let's keep in mind that this is an experiment. Let's go with the next method, the oven bag. These are the typical bags sold in the supermarket to cook meat or chicken. Let's grab another baguette, we do the scoring and we place it inside the bag. We close it and take it to a preheated oven at 460 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. And here we have it back. Look at how inflated the bag is, because all the gases stayed perfectly in there. And the oven spring is incredible. Ok, it's time to take it back to the oven for another 15 minutes. Isn't it amazing how fast the time passes on video? And here we have it. The truth is that I like it a lot. You have no idea how light this baguette feels. Listen to this. Wow, how cute it freaks. A pastry convection oven in which the convector cannot be turned off. It's preheated to the maximum temperature. Let's go with another baguette on the peel. Using the lamp, we are going to score them lengthwise. And we take them immediately to the oven, as we always do. And here comes a tool that comes almost from NASA, a vaporizer, which we're going to use it to spray the baguettes. Turn off the oven and leave it like this for 15 minutes. That way we also turn off the convector. After 15 minutes, let's turn it on again, lowering the temperature to 480 degrees Fahrenheit. And here we have them ready. Ok, I don't know if they're perfect, but they're not too bad. I don't know if we had the best of spring, but I think that this method can be improved. But I want you to hear how they creak. Are you lost with all the sourdough bread recipes that you find on the internet? Would you like to learn all the tips and tricks to make your own sourdough bread at home? Then I have the solution. I have designed the perfect masterclass of sourdough bread just made for you. By clicking the link on the description, you will learn how to make and take care of your sourdough starter, how to knead, shape, ferment, and bake your sourdough bread, how to use and read the baker's percentage, all the basic techniques to bake like a pro at home, and how to read and understand your dough. Don't miss out on it and click the link on the description right now. Time to move on the next method. We continue now with the deck oven, which must also be preheated at 480 degrees Fahrenheit. I prepare the peel with some semolina and I also place some baguettes there. Now surgical scoring and we take them immediately to the oven. Does not have steam by its own, we add it in an artisanal way. And we're going to leave them there for 25 minutes. And here they come, as beautiful as they can be. They feel incredibly lightweight. Let's leave them cooling here on the counter and move on to the seventh method. Home countertop oven. We turn off the convection and set the temperature to 480 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, we prepare the peel and place some baguettes there. Scoring and time to take them to the preheated oven. In this kind of oven, we will also use this artisan steam method with a sprayer. I love watching the baking process on time lapse. 
Here we have them back and look at what a lovely color they have. I really like this oven. We transfer them to the cooling rack and we continue. Now we move on to the eighth method, an oven that was especially designed for cooking pizza. Baking bread is always fun, so today is a beautiful day to fire up my pizza oven, but this time we're going to bake bread. The truth is that this oven is prepared to reach quite high temperatures, and in the meantime I'm going to try to achieve a temperature that it's close to a bread oven. As I have been doing until now, but a little bit more uncomfortable, I transfer the baguettes to the pill. Now I score them, but before taking them to the oven, what I'm going to do is just to turn it off. Now I place the baguettes on the stone and oops, <laughs> what happened? I almost lost one. Luckily, no one was watching. The idea is that the oven will slowly lower the temperature and the baguettes slowly will get that oven spring. Don't do this at home. Okay, time to see what is going on inside the oven. <laughs> wow! <laughs> time to start the oven again and I hope they don't get burned. There they go. And now it's time to let them get that crispy brown color as slowly as possible. Getting good color, so now it's time to flip them over. Wow, they're beautiful! Here they come. I didn't think they would turn out this good when I started this experiment. They came out looking really artisan. A little bit more rustic, but I like them. And here we have them. Let's listen as they creep. And after a long day of baking, here we have the eight baguettes. Please tell me if you don't notice the difference between one and the other. Each one has its own personality, each with its own style. Let's take a look to the one that we made first in the home oven with steam. At first sight we can tell that it's pretty good. It has a nice ear, good volume, a nice color and it is super light. Now let's move on to the one baked in the Dutch oven, which looks kinda good. Nice volume, a very nice ear too and above all very lightweight. Perhaps the crust was subtly less toasted than the previous one. Let's now take a look at the baguette made in the crock pot. I think that what happened here is that the lid couldn't maintain all the gases in it. The result would have been different. Anyway, it's not so bad. Now we move to the oven bag method. And I hope that you agree with me, it is one of the most beautiful ones. I really like everything. The volume it reached, the oven spring it had, how the ear turned out the color of the crust, which we turn it into a non-convection oven. The method has a lot of potential, but some adjustments need to be made. However, the baguette is not so bad. It is very lightweight and can be perfectly eaten. Now let's take a look at the baguette made on the deck oven, which would be the most professional method. Let's be honest, this baguette ended up looking as it's supposed to be. Nice color, perfect oven spring, beautiful ear, and most importantly, lightweight. And here comes the revelation of this video. Using a countertop oven we showed that we can really make a good baguette without having a super oven. And you're seeing the result right here. A good looking baguette with a beautiful ear, golden crust, good size and of course lightweight. And now we've reached the last method. The least thought of all these methods a baguette made in a pizza oven. While that oven was prepared for high temperatures, we managed to hack it and accommodate it a little bit. The result was a slightly more rustic baguette, but the truth is, it's not so bad. And here we have them all. I would like you to leave me in the comments which is the method that you like the most. Now, let's see how the crumbs are looking. This is a style of crumb that I like. A really open crumb and very airy. Beware of the crumb of the Dutch oven, really interesting and the crumb of the crock pot could not develop so well because the crust dried out ahead of time. Attention to the crumb made in the baking bag. I knew that the crust of the deck oven was going to be superior. The crumb of the convection oven turned into a non-convection oven is not that bad. I knew that the crust of the deck oven was going to be superior. Look at this crumb made in a countertop oven. I can't believe it. Take a look at the crumb we achieved on a pizza oven. Wow! <laughs> and now the moment that you've been waiting for, or maybe I was waiting for. <laughs> and now we're going to prepare a typical Spanish jamón bocata. In the end, why are we baking so much bread? Am I right?
<laughs> and you know, may the gluten be with you. And see you in the next video. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about sourdough bread and sourdough starter, I encourage you to check the link on the description. And remember, this masterclass was specially designed for you.